Hey folks, in this video we're going to be talking about excess reactants and like if there's too many cooks. Anywho, I want you to be able to define what a excess reactant is or an excess reactant. And I want you to be able to calculate um, which of chemical in a chemical reaction is going to be the excess reactant. And then also determine how much of that excess reactant will be remaining after a reaction is complete. So let's get going with that. Um, excess reactants. Whenever things are being combined, whether it's chemistry, baking, building, etc., one of our reactants or things that we're combining is going to get used up first. That's the limiting reactant, the one you run out of first. However, the excess reactant is anything else that you have left over at the end, any of those starting materials that haven't been used up because you ran out of one of your materials. Um, and so let's talk about some examples. If you were going to be making like hot chocolate from some little hot chocolate mix packets, and let's say you boil up three cups of water, but you only have two packets, and each packet only needs one cup of water. Well, chocolate mix is going to be limiting then. If you only have two packets of chocolate, but you got three cups of water, well, when you use up those two packets, you'll still have some hot water sitting around, but you won't have any more chocolate mix. So if we got those three cups of water and two packets, we can only make two cups of hot chocolate. Our excess reactant is the water, and we'll have one cup of water left behind. Neat. Or let's talk about another example. Let's say we're packing up clothes, and you've got like 35 pieces of clothing that are for some reason all the exact same size, and you've got three bags that are for some reason all the exact same size. Well, let's say each bag can only hold nine pieces of clothing. Let's think about this. Which of these is going to be the excess reactant? What are we going to have an excess of, bags or clothes? Pause the video and think about it. Well, if we make up a thought, or if we do some maths, we can say, all right, each bag can hold nine pieces of clothing. Three times nine tells us with our three bags, we can hold 27 pieces of clothing. That means once we pack 27 pieces of clothing, we'll be out of bags. We'll still have eight pieces of clothing sitting around. Bags are limiting, and clothes are in excess here. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about some chemistry examples of excess reactants. When we're doing a reaction, one chemical is almost always going to be in excess. It's really hard to not have an excess and have a perfect ratio um, of two chemicals combining. Um, because most reactions involves, involve us combining two chemicals, except for some fun decomposition reaction. Um, one of those chemicals is going to limit us, while the other one we're going to have an excess of. So if we want to determine the excess reactant, we're just going to follow the same procedure as if we wanted to determine a limiting reactant. The uh, chemical that is not limiting, or I should say the reactant that is not limiting, will be in excess. So if we want to determine how much excess reactant will remain after a reaction, well, we're going to figure out first what is the excess reactant, and then we will make sure that we can, uh, using our limiting reactant, figure out how much excess reactant it will react with. So we're going to convert from our limiting reactant, whatever that number and units are, into uh, our excess reactant so that our units match whatever we're told about our excess reactants. For instance, if we're given uh, liters of excess, whatever the excess reactant is initially, we'll want to convert from our limiting reactant to excess reactant in liters. And so then we're just going to find the difference between what we use up reacting uh, with our limiting dude and how much we actually started with. So we'll subtract this quantity um, from the total amount of excess reactant in the that we're given. So let's look at an example because that seems weird without an example. Um, we got 4.5 moles of hydrogen and we're burning that with 3.4 moles of oxygen. What's the excess reactant and how much of that excess will remain after the reaction? Well, the first thing we want to do is determine what's limiting and what's in excess. And to do that, we're going to convert both of these two products. So I'll convert my uh, hydrogen to products and my oxygen to products. And I can see that the oxygen makes uh, less product. Well, it's obscured there. So I know that oxygen is my limiting reactant. I always like to circle my limiting reactant. And I know that hydrogen is my excess reactant. Okay, so now I'll convert from my limiting reactant, uh, or those three moles of O2, 3.4 moles of O2, and I'll convert that to hydrogen, making sure it's in the same units that hydrogen I'm told in. So I'll go from moles of oxygen to moles of hydrogen. Um, so we'll do that step, and that gives me 1.7 moles of hydrogen. And so now I'll find the difference between this 1.7 moles um, that's going to be used up and the amount of uh, hydrogen I started with, uh, which was 4.5 moles. So we'll do 4.5 minus 1.7. And that tells us that there's going to be 2.8 moles of hydrogen left over after the reaction. When all 3.4 moles of our oxygen have reacted, they will have used up 1.7 moles of hydrogen, and thus we will have only 2.8 moles left over. 
Um, cool. Uh, let's look at a, another example, maybe? Yeah, let's look at another example. Um, so this is a little spicier, but the same general principle. Um, if we've got 34.0 grams of methane, CH4, and we burn that with 36.6 .6 liters of oxygen, which one of these two chemicals is going to limit the reaction? Which one will be in excess, and how much of that excess will be left over? Why don't you pause the video and see if you can take the crack at this guy? Cool, well you paused it, let's talk about it together. Um, first thing I want to do is come up with a stoichiometry map here, because I'm going to need to convert from my reactants to pro product, I'll convert to CO2 because it's the first one listed, but again, I can pick either one of these. Um, so I'm gonna start with uh, methane, and so I guess I'm going from the mass of methane to moles of CO2, and I'm gonna be going from a volume of O2 to moles of CO2. So I will need a plan that works for both of those. Um, let's start by changing our grams of methane to CO2. I'll do that in two steps. I'll use the molar mass to change the moles of methane, and then I'll use that mole ratio to convert um, from methane into CO2. Um, and then I'll do the uh, oxygen conversion to CO2 in two steps as well. First, I'll change from liters of oxygen to moles of oxygen, and then from moles of oxygen to moles of CO2. Um, cool, well, let's uh, set up that stoichiometry. I'm not gonna take my time or go talk it through it very thoroughly, but here we go, we can see our methane will allow us to produce 2.12 moles of carbon dioxide. And if we check out our oxygen, we can see, oh, my CO2 is a little bit cut off, but that's fine. Um, we can see that that's gonna produce less, uh, one, or 0 0.817 moles of carbon dioxide. So this means that oxygen is the limiting reactant. So we're gonna use um, what we know about oxygen and convert to methane, making sure we have the same units that we were given for methane initially. So I'll convert from my 36.6 liters of oxygen to uh, grams of methane. I'm just going to make a little note up here about how many moles of CO2 are produced. Actually, I guess, you know what I could do is I can convert from my product, the CO2 that I've produced, into um, methane. That works as well. Let's do that. Um, yeah, that'll work out the same way. So once I know the amount based on my limiting reactant, I'll use my amount of product produced based on the limiting reactant. And yeah, I'll convert that from moles of CO2 to uh, my mass of CH4. That's actually going to be a few fewer steps. Um, cool, so to do that, first I'll change from moles, uh, or to change from moles of CO2 to grams of methane, I'll change from moles of CO2 to moles of CH4 using my balanced chemical equation. And I will change from moles of CH4, methane, to grams using the molar mass. Um, cool, and so here's what that stoichiometry would look like. And so this tells me that to make these products, these 0 0.817 moles of products, that will use up 13.1 grams of methane. And so now I can figure out how much methane is going to be left over if I started with 34.0 grams of methane and I need to use 13.1 grams of methane. Well, then that tells me that I should have 20.9 grams of methane left over, or that's going to be the remaining excess. Um, cool beans. Well, that is uh, the end of this problem. And the end of this video. Um, I hope you feel like you understand even more thoroughly what a limiting react, re, reactant is. Um, I hope you also understand what a excess reactant is, how to calculate that excess reactant, and how much of that excess reactant will be remaining after a reaction has been completed. Anyway, that's the end. Ta-ta. Have a great rest of your life.